from a very hot and a very humid Durham Park. Hello and welcome into pregame Tomahawk Talk. I'm your host, Adam Gacken. Today, the Bourne Braves take on a West Division rival, the Falmouth Commodores. This is a massive game standings-wise. These two teams currently sit in fourth and fifth place in the West Division, and a win today for Falmouth could jump them up into fourth place. These two teams' records very similar. Falmouth is 6-12. Bourne also has six wins, but those two ties really help them out right now 6 10 and 2 the record for the Bravos last time out for Falmouth it was a win at home against the Chatham Anglers in a very tight game you'll notice and we'll talk about this later on with our beat reporter Sean Brennan that Falmouth has only won games at home this season they have been frankly awful on the road. The Bravos have been pretty solid at home this season. Won the last home game against Harwich. Tied a home game before that against Wareham. So we'll see what the Bravos can do today. Last time out, they lost in a game that was shortened due to darkness. Played in just five and a half innings against Katuit. We'll start you off here on pregame Tomahawk Talk with the highlights from that game last night. Cam Kojal steps into the box for Bourne. Hitting 186 across 12 games. Tied for second in the Cape in doubles. The first pitch he sees, he sends a long way to right field. Back goes Taylor. Goodbye, baseball. Cam Kojul hits the fourth home run of the summer for the Bravos. All four have come on the road. It's his first and Bourne with an early 1-0 lead. 2-1 count now from Zane Adams. He goes to the plate. Another line drive that is going to fall for a base hit. To score is Grant Jay on the RBI single. The throw comes to third by Vitterick, and that's going to be an out at third base. So the RBI single for Peebles ties things up, but Adams gets the first out of the inning on the defensive play by Vitterick in right field. Two returners from USA in the lineup today for the Cataliers. And a fly ball to left. Holcomb is going to make the catch in deep left center. The throw comes into third. And the Hoosier does a job. A sacrifice fly by Devin Taylor makes it 2-1 Cats. Runners remain at second and first. Another 0-2 offering. Line drive to deep left field. Holcomb on the run. He's not going to get there. And it's off the very top of the wall. Thatch is going to score. Peebles stops at third on the RBI double by Tyler Cerny, who makes it 3-1 Cataliers. And now the Big 12 Player of the Year, Max Ballou, sends one past Michelle, past Kojal, and into right field. Peebles scores. Here comes Cerny. And a two-run single by Ballou gives the Ketteliers a 5-1 lead. 1-1 pitch. Slider. Line drive. Left field. That one's in front of the left fielder, Brandon Compton. And it's going to bring home a run. Ethan Conrad scores on the RBI single by Ben Hartle. His first hit on the Cape. And it's 5-2. Misla. With the 3-1. Below the knees of Michelle for ball four. It's an RBI walk for the Hokie, which makes it 5-3 Katuit. The bases remain loaded for Bourne in a 5-3 deficit. The pitch, ground ball into right field for a base hit. Forthful in. Here comes Hartle around third. The throw off the mark. And Isaiah Jackson breaks the 0 for 26 with a two-run single to tie this thing up at five. And now an 0-2 offering to Kojal. All the way to the backstop. Here comes Michelle. And the Bravos take the lead back on the wild pitch. And now a 1-2 offering to Kojal. In there for strike three. It's a drop third strike. Here comes Jackson to score. Kojal safe at first. Never seen that before. Drop third strike. Jackson's going to score. And the inning stays alive as Kojal safe at first base. Faye to the plate on the 1-1. Deep drive to right. Viterick back. And just like that, Katuit's got the lead. Bourne scores six runs in the top half of the fourth, but all it takes is one swing to change this game for the Cataliers. A three-run shot for Tanner Thatch, and it's 8-7 Katuit. We continue on here on pregame Tomahawk Talk. Adam Gacken alongside Cam Manna and Nathan Schwartz here at a very hot Dorm Park Cam last night. Weather did not really look like this. We didn't have the sun beaming down on us. There were the clouds and the darkness that eventually ended the game. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we're going to play nine innings here tonight or 
eight and a half, we shall see. But last night, five and a half innings, the Braves losing by one run in a game now they have to squash. Bottom line is that was a loss last night, but the offense was there overall. We'll get to that in a second. You just hear today have to see some better starting pitching from the Braves. That's what kind of hurt them early. Once again, we saw that in the Wareham series. It kind of left you in that Harwich win, but the Braves have to be more consistent with their starting pitching, and we saw that as an issue last night. Yeah, we've had a lot of starting issues, pitching issues recently, but Tucker Novotny is going to hope to turn that around. He's already had one start this summer. Yeah, and he struggled in that one, to be frank. Seven hits through just three innings. He got some help by some chat on base running blunders in those first three innings. He also walked three batters through those first three innings in his born debut. He pitched a couple times with Katuit last year, but just looking to get him back into a groove today, and as Cam said, get the starting pitching back in a good spot. Yeah, for some guys, it just takes a couple starts to finally you know, get settled here on the Cape. Cam, back to you. This offense, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, has just looked completely different over the last week or so. They've shown a lot of fight when going down early, and they've been able to battle back successfully. Yeah, 43 hits in their last five games. We saw Cam Coles with a big home run last night, swinging the ball a lot better. He was in that two spot. We've seen what Ethan Conrad has brought to the table. One through nine, the Braves hitting a lot better. We saw Isaiah Jackson last night break in 0 for 26 on a big two RBI single. So things are getting going, and now the Braves offense is keeping them in baseball games, coming back down 6-0 and back-to-back nights against the Gatemen and a six spot last night in the fourth to keep them against the Cataliers. So if this offense keeps playing and Tucker Novotny can pitch, could be a good night tonight for the Braves. All right, well, let's talk to the man that hit that home run last night, Cam Kozel, as we continue on here on pregame Tomahawk Talk. Adam Gotkin now joined by Cameron Kozel here on pregame Tomahawk Talk, ahead of the Bravos taking on the Commodores. Cam, first off, you've been swinging the bat pretty well recently. You had a home run yesterday, double off the wall the day before. What's been going right? Just attacking, attacking fastballs, you know, going up there with a competitive mindset, just um, ready to attack, swing at strikes, take balls, and um, good things have been happening. It's been a pretty interesting last couple of days here on the Cape. We didn't have batting practice the last two days traditionally. How does that change your approach when you're not, you know, normally inside the turtle and you're not taking I.O.? Yeah, sometimes it benefits guys like me because you don't have a lot of um, time to prepare and it's just kind of like playing wiffle ball in the front yard. You just go out there and compete and have fun and just um, rely on yourself and, uh, and just go out there and hit the ball hard. So sometimes that's a good thing for players. Today is probably the most humid, hottest day so far that we've had this summer. What do you do to make sure that your body's right and you're all good, ready for the game? It's kind of like in the sandlot when they're all like, Benny, it's too hot. We got to go to the pool. Like with us, it's like, we got to go to the beach. But um, there's just going to be days like this where you just got to grind through it, um, be around your teammates, happy happy to be here, just kind of embrace them and go out there and have fun and play baseball. So that's, that's what we're going to do today. You're a guy who's got some pretty good drip. You got the American flag cleats. You got some nice sunglasses. Are you a believer in the look good, play good mindset? Uh, sure, we'll say yes. But um, sometimes, sometimes too much flash is a bad thing. Just let your play be the let the uh, let the play be the thing that's known about you. So um, yeah, just play baseball hard. <laughs> You're, you're the DH today. What changes when you're the designated hitter, when you're not in the field, and how do you stay locked in for your at-bats? Yeah, so that's something that this spring that I kind of had to go through with the DH spot, and um, it's kind of hard. It's like the equivalent to basketball would be a guy who's just staying in the corner, and he only gets the ball a couple times a game. He's expected to make a three every time. So um, it's just kind of figuring out a way to keep your mind engaged and not overthink things and just be around your teammates. Um, Kit, like I w- I'll go out and warm up the left field just so it feels like I'm doing something else. So, because um, when you're playing in the field, your mind doesn't have time uh, to think, overthink your at bats or anything, because you're just immersed in the game and sweating a little bit. So, when you DH, just try to keep your mind occupied. You, you've been here for a while now. We're almost a month into the season, and there hasn't really been that much roster change compared to what we've seen in the past. How is everything chemistry-wise? Do you feel like everyone's kind of starting to just become themselves? Oh, no, it's awesome. It, you know, there's so many great personalities on this team. Garrett Michelle, he's one of the funniest guys I've ever been on on a baseball field. You know, you have Brain Holcomb, Isaiah, like all these guys just make the team what it is. And it's so, it's so great when we have all these guys come together to have fun and just – come out here and play baseball so it's good that there's not a lot of roster change um, for the team but you know when a guy comes in we welcome it welcome him and um, go out there and win ball games with him all right well thank you very much cam yep adam got now joined by sean brennan here on pregame tomahawk talk ahead of the bravos taking on the commodores and sean let's start things off talking about falmouth as starter it's a guy to arkansas who has not yet started a game this summer No, Parker Coyle has five relief appearances under his belt. He last pitched a couple days ago, um, very solid in relief, um, and he has a 
just above a four ERA, and that's a little high, but it's really skewed by only one bad performance against Harwich. Otherwise, he's been very solid, and um, Bourne fans at home are probably thinking, Parker Coyle, that sounds familiar, because he came in on June 27th with one out in the eighth, threw five straight strikeouts to end the game and seal a Commodore's win. Well, that was a Commodore's win at home, but on the road, still no wins this season for Falmouth. They have only one at home, and maybe the Bravos can continue that losing streak for Falmouth on the road, but it's pretty crazy to see a team that has not won away from home this deep into the year. It really is. 0-8 away from Falmouth, and um, the stats reflect that. They have the most hits in the league at home. Their average and OPS are top three. ERA is in the same boat, but then when they go on the road, something about it. That ERA skyrockets, those offensive stats go way down. It's just a crazy disparity that I haven't really seen, but this is you kind of feel like with those road struggles, this is a game that Bourne has to have. Um, the, seri the season series is split one-to-one, -one, but coming back home, Bourne's offense has been a lot better lately. They've just been a better team overall of late, so really think that this is one that they should have. Yeah, this is definitely one that Bourne really needs to win. These two teams battling for that last spot in the playoffs right now, and tomorrow Bourne plays YD, who is the top team in the league. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in to this edition of Pregame Tomahawk Talk. First pitch coming up soon at 6 p.m.